It's the beginning of 2018, so naturally we get a wave of should I learn this or that language this year. Some make it a very difficult question, but the answer typically is quite obvious. Okay, so this will be a talking video, so feel free to minimize the tab. First of all, those of you who watch this channel know I'm mainly a C++ programmer, but I really don't want this video to be limited to a single language. I've been in the industry for, well, quite some years now and I can see it constantly changing. I've done C, C++, Java, well, JavaScript, TypeScript, which made me abandon raw JavaScript. I've done PHP, I've done, I've done some Python now and then. So what I'm trying to say is that I really know a thing of Thing, a thing or two, or how our little world looks like. I also know how we, the programmers, often like to advertise our favorite language as THE solution to all problems. It's pretty much natural for us. You often see, for example, <coughs> web programmers saying, well, native languages are dead or dying. You might see high-level enterprise programmers thinking guys doing, for example, low-level embedded systems programming being really dinosaurs, right? This leads to endless holy wars and language bashing, which don't really result in anything constructive and simply blurs the picture for anyone wanting to get into the industry. While such things are obviously mature, those types of exchanges distort reality for anyone on the outside. Well, not long ago I had a conversation with a Rust programmer who really claimed there is no memory model in C++, which is well, obviously wrong, and that the Rust compiler can statically detect all object lifetime problems. Well. Of course, I got no real answer when I ask about, for example, external library calls, right? But what I got was only more C++ bashing nonsense. It was plainly visible that this person got all his C++ knowledge from other C++ bashers and simply reiterated it. This was a typical echo chamber effect. So now the question is, would anyone listening to him consider using C++, even if it fit perfectly? Well, I don't think so. It's hard to objectively make a choice with all such noise. We've seemed to have forgotten the only, and let me repeat that, the only objective truth when deciding what to use on Learn use the best tool for the job. If it fits perfectly, if it fits the project you are working on, intend to work on, or see yourself working on sometime in the future, simply use it, whatever it is. Want to make a high performance game engine? Well, that's a no-brainer, learn a new C++. Want to quickly make a web application? Use PHP. How about a complex enterprise-grade web application? Well, use Java with Spring. Easy. You may not be a fan of a given language, but if it's the best tool for the job, simply use it. Right? Let's take an example. If I ever wanted to create a personal web page, a simple one, I would most likely use PHP. Why? Because it's easy, because it's fast, and it gets the job done. If some Java guru, for example, asks me, why did I bother with PHP? It's such a mess. It's horrible. Well, I would tell him, I chose PHP because it got my project finished faster than what I would be doing with Java, for example, with Spring or Spring Boot. It takes less maintenance, it's easier to deploy, and it's simply less effort. PHP was better for the job, and I simply used it. Period. 
But for example, if I wanted to do, let's say, some backend microservices stuff, I would use Java or C++. That's what I'm actually using for that stuff today. And guess what? They would also do their job. They would perfectly fit. That's a natural choice. Of course, we can start a debate on what is the best tool for the job. How do you actually define best? Well, that's the challenging part, but not really complex if you think about it. You typically have a set of requirements, right? You know your target environment. You know how your project will evolve and scale. Well, at least you might get, might have some idea about the future. You know, or you can research what tools you already have available for this or that language. All of this can usually give you a clear answer what is the best at this moment, what language or what technology. That's why questions like, should I learn this or that, 2018 or whatever year, do not really matter. It all depends on what you want or have to do or where do you see yourself in the future. If you go with only hype trends, you might be constantly jumping from example from Java to C Sharp to Ruby to JavaScript to whatever the next hype thing after JavaScript will be. We don't know. And you will be never truly good at anything. Because instead of focusing on getting the job done as efficiently as possible, you will be simply jumping on trends. And what's the point? It will be just simply wasting time. Use and learn, well, actually first learn, then use. What is the best for the job at hand? It's that easy. Okay, that was my little rant on the topic. I'm quite curious what you think about this. What, what do you think about well, language trends or technology trends in general? Leave a comment below, give a thumbs up, and I see you in the next one.